Hello and welcome viewers. I have not made a video like this in a while. You'd have to go way back on my channel, like a year or two or something like that. But I have done it again. I have made an interesting contraption in Create. So we're going to take a look at it today and let me know what you think. So here is the control panel for setting your XY position, some buttons. Here is the interesting contraption. It is a storage selector thing. I'm probably create advanced storage array, CASA. It's maybe not final, but that's probably what I'm going to title this YouTube video. And you probably saw it when you uh, clicked on the video. So here it is. Um, could be made a little more tight and compact, but again, when my brain was figuring this whole thing out, I needed to kind of lay everything out all open. And just makes it easier to show as well if you're not condensing everything. So we can set the Y value down a little bit, and he goes down. We can set our X value smaller as well. And he will move over. Boom. And then the, f the fun part happens. Do this. He grabs a box. And he moves it over. And brings it down to this spot here. And I've set up a little thing so that this display here will read what is in the box. So you give it a second here, it should update. Boom, and it lists, it won't list everything, but it alerts the first five items or something. So you can easily see what you've just grabbed. I tried to do the thing where like, if the arm would move this thing, but it seems to not work that way. You can't move this guy, the uh, storage display link here. You can't move it. But, once you're done with your box, you click return box. This is the part that was quite tricky. But it moves into position, moves up, and then places the box. There's a bit of delay there. Unsticks it, and is done. Oh, I am so happy this took hours to do, but uh, the real big thing, I tried to do this um, this build a while ago with these gantry cranes, but I couldn't quite figure it out. Things were eluding me. And this this is what we needed, the uh, port, Rose Port's lamp. This allows me to see, based on a parallel, if you're into programming in that, this is like a parallel array of numbers to those guys. So each of these is an axis here, and so I can see when I move it, where exactly it's supposed to be, and they're synced up, they're in the same position along here. And this, again, the comparator outputs a signal of 6 here, because it's like 6 away from here or so, something like that. But yeah, that allows me to, to know exactly where it is, and it doesn't matter, like, I have this thing that's like comparing the... Uh, the input value here to what it's actually coming out the end of that. And based on that, if it's more, it moves it one way. If it's less, it moves the other way. And so it kind of settles it right in the middle so that there's always one power powering this redstone right here. And that enables it to find its position, basically. Like if I made this spin too fast, like I found that this has to be set to 32 speed. I can't go faster than that. The system's a little speed limited. But, because if I go faster, it'll like overshoot, and then overshoot, and overshoot, and it won't actually settle into the spot. So I found the 32 is about as fast as I can go. I can kind of go 48, but again, it starts overshooting, and it will eventually find its way at 40, at the 48 or whatever, but better to be safe and keep things accurate than you know, try to get it as fast as you can, so... So yeah, that's the, the main moving component here. Now this bit, 
This is the more complicated bit. So, oh, how much do I want to explain this? Um, this is your uh, three signals here for controlling your uh, extend, grab, retract. That's what these three guys right here do. And they have it, this is your button. I have it labeled as the button there. So when you first hit the button to uh, to go and grab something there, um, you hit that, it extends because of this guy, or grabs it with the sticky thing, and then retracts. And then you get over here, this sends the two signals which are required to um, basically, it goes to here and it cancels this out so this sets to like zero whatever and then this guy um, signals it to just go all the way to the end so it just pulls the whole thing to the end and then that one all the way down and that returns you to your zero origin position for both x and y x and y and then when you the more complicated bit because this bit this was pretty simple when i got to this point but the more complicated bit, which is all this and all of this stuff, uh, not this, this is just the mirror to that one over there. So a lot of this is quite modular. Again, these two are things are mirrors of themselves because the two axes are the same and they each have a little piece there that controls their movement. But here is the more complicated bit. Um, this guy. Um... Basically, when you send your trigger to send the box back, this is the first thing that fires, which flips this, which sends the x-axis first, which is very important because both axis, axes cannot run at the same time. The, uh, if this one starts moving, this one can't move because it's part of a moving contraption. And so this will then get desynced because again, this guy is not limited by not being part of that contraption, and so it will not work when that one is moving. And so I have to do them uh, one at a time. I can do them both for returning to the start position, because it just resets it to zero, and it can run, just like leaves these guys running and pushing them in that direction, uh, which just... which so it doesn't matter the timing, or it doesn't matter when this guy's running or whatever, because this guy will run and then that guy will run. Uh, but I have to wait here. Um, when it finishes moving over, this guy gives a little signal, <clears throat> turns this off, this kind of slows down the drop off of the signal. This is a pulse or a falling edge detector. Basically, when the signal turns off, it sends out a pulse. And that pulse goes over here, flips this guy, starts the y-axis going, and sends the signal here. Um, that gets the y-axis going up to its proper position. And then over here, we get that, let's see, we have a signal in here. And the y-axis, wherever it stops, um, there's a signal trigger there, powers this. Again, this extends that signal so it's so it gives it enough time to move upwards the whole length whole length there. And then again we get another um, falling edge detector, so when this signal turns off, then it will send a pulse through, but only if this has been enabled, which it only gets enabled when you hit that return to thing return to sender button, because otherwise this um, this trigger other things and just no good. So that gets enabled, lets the signal through, disables itself afterwards, and then it goes through here and it does its extend, um, release, retract. And that's it. I mean, if you want to try to build it yourself, I think I've probably given enough in the video to do it. Given enough, uh, shown enough here. Um, again, all the speeds of these motors are 32. 
Uh, this, <clears throat> I can explain this a little bit more. So here we have our clutch. This is enabling and disabling the movement. This is controlled only when both, <clears throat> or whenever, when either one of these, so this is an OR gate right here. So when either this guy or this guy get a signal. So if this extends one redstone signal out, this guy gets a signal, or if this retracts one redstone signal, this guy gets a signal. So if either of them get a signal, you enable it to start moving it, and then if if it's the redstone frequency one section, which is this guy, if it's the signal has gone to extended by one, then I want to power the gear shift and it'll be in the reverse direction. But if it's the other one, it just goes in that direction. You got that mirrored on both sides here, so that when you <clears throat> change it there, it moves to change. You can see um, I can like move it a number of them back. And you see it almost tries to overshoot, but it doesn't quite. Even if it did, it would send a signal on here and it would correct itself. So that's the beauty of this system. So even if it were to overshoot one, it would it would like be able to detect it. So basically, this is what um, people in the hobby electronics world would call a, a an encoder. A, they have like rotary encoders. So in a circle, they put those on like servos, so you can know the position of the servo. <clears throat> but here we have a linear encoder, so that we can know the position of what it's supposed. to or what it is um, at all times. So we can take that value, subtract it here, and make sure if it's more, or if there are input signals more, then it'll move it. If it's less, it'll move it. Oh, okay. Um, is that everything? Let's just set this guy to seven. Oh, I just move them at the same time. And you'll see what happens. Did it work? Might have worked, but it also might have broken. One, two, three, four. Is this in front of the right chest? Oh, it did. Okay. So it was enough of a delay between there for moving one or two, but if you try to move more than one, it'll break. Um, if they try to move at exactly the same time, then yeah, it'll definitely break it. It'll like it'll break this the gantry carriage and then this guy will just be left there. So don't do that. Don't try to move things too quickly. But here we'll do some more demonstrating here. The thing pulls in the box, moves it over, and brings it down. And in a moment you should see the list of items. Populate. There we go. I just kind of dumped my inventory in that chest. Okay, and we return our box. If you watch the redstone here, this guy goes, sends the pulse to move the y-axis, and then that guy finishes his delay there. And we'll send a pulse through. That will trigger our depositing of the box. Ta-da, and then that guy flips back to finish. Oh, I, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I don't know if it's too much of a tutorial. Oh, I've also got this just to tell you when one side is moving so you don't flip the other side or whatever. But it is okay to change it on the current side that is currently moving up and down or whatever. Doesn't matter, it'll find its position. Um, yeah, I uh, don't quite know. There's some difficulty here, the practicality of this, because I wasn't able to use the spinning component of the gantry crane to power it. This this is one area that's a little iffy. I'm not quite sure how it would be done, besides maybe encasing a uh, water wheel or something in a box connected to this. Maybe you could get the motion. You also have to have it up here, because um, otherwise I tried to do this where you'd like stop 
um, the gantry crane with a redstone signal. Like if you power it here, it'll stop moving this, but power the shaft connected to here. So I've done some experimenting with that, but it's been tricky. Redstone's been challenging, so just having each of these things separate has been really helpful. You know, basically just copied this thing over here, and I copied it over here. This this bit is exactly the same as this and this. It's just this one is, you know, these guys are marked for uh, this guy. They've got the same frequency there, and these um, transmitter receivers have the frequency for this y-axis. So, yep. Yeah, so that's that's the CASA, the Create Advanced Storage Array. Let me know what you think, and uh, maybe I'll be inspired for another thing, but don't get your hopes up. Thanks for watching.